Good afternoon, my friends and family. Um, I, I thought it would be good to say hi to you in the flesh. Uh, we sent out a, an update last weekend or something. Wait, mm, I lose track of time. Yes. Anyway, no, maybe after we met with Dr. Vance on Tuesday. Um, anyway, so I thought it would be good to talk to you with my own voice and um, just see you guys, let you see me. Craig's at the store, grocery store, and he will be back soon. And then we will watch the final men's US Open tennis match which has been a gift from God for two, these two weeks that have been so challenging. We've had lots of tennis to watch, which is very mindfulness-y, if you know what that is. Um, you watch a ball, you know? <laughs> Sounds boring if you don't like, if you've never liked tennis or watched it and understand it, but it's um, every point is just such finesse and power and um but the ball goes back and forth and so it kind of keeps your mind preoccupied so we have been doing that and that's been a gift because um i don't know that we've ever been through anything so difficult um this whole year you know has been hard and challenging and I don't know maybe it's not worse than that um, but it's been disappointing and frightening um, when I wasn't able to collect enough stem cells in the first go-round and um, the whole the process I went through is a shots for four days and then begin collection but I had to wait one day because my stem cells my, the marker in my blood wasn't high enough to begin collection and then they it wasn't quite high enough but they went ahead and began collection and I collected for four days and it's four grueling days. It was 20 to 24 hours in a bed. Um, and you can't get up and go anywhere in the bed even. That's not an IV pole. You're just um, hooked up to a machine. And so mostly the challenges for me have been mental. Um, great mental challenges. Um, so after all that labor, um, I had one million stem cells and the doctors always like to, you know, get extras, but we found out on Tuesday. So we thought we might need 4,000, but 4 million, but Dr. Vance said we were halfway there and 2 million would work, but how do we get the next bit? Um, so what I'm doing is I, we gave this in the update on Caring Bridge. If you don't follow me on Caring Bridge, it's in Jamie's corner and um, caringbridge.org, I believe. You just search, it's pretty easy to find, I think. And you can just look at all the posts. Um, I post these videos on there too. So anyway, um, we were so, so, so relieved um, that he had a plan to try to get that next million stem cells so that we can go forward with the transplant. Um, so he decided that I would be hospitalized for this interim chemo. So I'll have chemo. So tomorrow, Monday, I will go be admitted to the hospital and be discharged Wednesday. That's the plan. We have to stay flexible 
because these plans change. But uh, I will have chemo, instead of having it just all in one infusion, I will have it over four infusions and the same amount and it'll be easier on my body and they'll check my labs and stuff like that and give me anything I need like blood transfusions or platelets and so that's why I'll be in the hospital. Um, and then the plan is I'll begin the shots again, which um, the, there's two, two different kinds, but this one kind, it's Granix. I will just maybe up to 14 whole days go outpatient. So we'll still be at the house here and I will, after I get discharged on Wednesday, I'll begin the shots the next day outpatient and have these two shots every day. They'll check my labs every other day or so. And um, watching for that stem cell marker in the blood so to be, to go, to increase and go up, to be ready for collection again. So we are um, hopeful, uh, um, tempted, uh, bored, grateful, uh, at times rejoicing in the Lord from the heart, you know, I mean, every day, every moment, we're trying to trust Him and depend on Him and there's no joy unless you rejoice in him. So trying to do that, but guys, let me tell you what a mammoth uh, task it is mentally every day for me. Craig is having a hard time too. Some days he seems to do a little better than I do uh, like today. Today, he's like, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, he thinks, I think of the word balanced, where it's like, you're not struggling. You're just kind of normal. Um, I feel that way sometimes. That's one thing I'm very grateful for. Um, and so, um, I think that's the whole medical thing that's happening at this point, that this is the phase we're in. Praying to move toward collection. And as one of my friends prayed for big, fat, perky stem cells, and all of you have been just praying for floods of healthy stem cells. And so please keep praying for that and um, you know, it's not, I don't, I, don't, I know that God isn't like, uh, okay, you know, if I get a certain number of people praying, then we're going to do it. But if not, I'm not, or something like that. And yet in the vast mystery of who he is and how eternity works and everything, he uses the prayers of the hearts of his people um, to move his arm uh, and his whole heart is to move his arm on our behalf and for our good because he's our shepherd um, and you know the Old Testament likens God to a shepherd and then Jesus called himself the good shepherd and that you know he contrasted it with um, a hired hand who doesn't care about the sheep but the shepherd actually gives his life for the sheep so God is ready and waiting to help us to deliver us um, and 
that is where Craig and I are just like, oh, we have to keep casting ourselves back on God, remembering who he is. Uh, it's not, it's not a given that we're going to be thinking that way. Uh, you know, our, our minds are still subject to the fall and they get negative and afraid. And, uh, and it's the waiting, this extended process, like how I wish that God had not intended this extended process. It just challenges us all the more. And so one of my mentors, um, after, you know, when we found out our plan B and how extended in time it is, um, it's adding a good three weeks to an already grueling process. Um, but she said, dear one, in a text to me, I hear your discouragement and fatigue at this extended wait, but do not yield yourself to it. Stand firm against the enemy, for God will have the last word. And um, it has bolstered me like I can't yield myself to it. Um, although I also need to give myself grace when I feel weak um, because God has said, you know, when you are weak, I am strong. And so I also had a lot of encouragement coming through different readings and things um, that uh, uh, well, okay, okay, <laughs> hang on, let's see, Mama. Uh, okay, um, well, so my, so <laughs> my brother-in-law who also had this done affirmed that it's a psychological battle. And so, uh, he encouraged me so much and, um, just, you know, said, you've been through so much and you are, you're the superhero and stuff like that. And my sister Lori said, you know, a setback by definition means things aren't over yet. It's just a setback. And it's those logical, oh, right. God is still moving in this process. Kind of a, oh, that happens throughout the day. And then it's like, oh, I get punched again, or, you know, um, I, I wish I had access to my, let me see. Let me see if I can find this thing. Um, I had told a friend that this situation, this whole thing, this life we're living right now is, uh, it feels kind of like there are times when um, I feel like I'm out in, in an ocean and the waves keep coming up and down and where they come up and then I can't see anymore. And um, my, one of my nieces, um, to put it into words, she didn't know that I had thought about that metaphor, but just in what we're going through with the ups and downs, she said, the constant mix of relief and hope 
and hardship seems so hard. It feels like you're at sea, losing the horizon and getting it back with each swell that comes and goes. And then she said, we're in the boat with you. I'm taking all this in as I speak it aloud. I'm speaking it to the heavens. I'm speaking it to the heavenlies. I'm speaking it to the spiritual realms. <sighs> speaking the truth to my own heart. Um, and I, I hope, I hope it blesses you too. I know that we are all, every single one of us, struggling with just, uh, it's like, you know, too much gravity. <laughs> we have to get up in the morning and like push against gravity. <laughs> I gotta get up. I gotta get going. I gotta face, you know, this thorn in the flesh that I have, this cross that God has called me to bear in my regular life. Um, you know, or I have chronic pain. We all have suffering. It is part of being human. And it helps me to remember that too, because I can feel like everyone else is just living the normal life. And I've been sidelined and, you know, it's just, it can feel very, very lonely. And isolating but then God reminds me that he is with us and that I'm normal so like one of the things <laughs> I hope this isn't TMI <laughs> but one of the things that just seems like salt in the wound men if you don't shave um, you won't understand this, but I think all men experience this too, I think. But my hair has started growing back since I haven't had chemo since June. And it's growing back worse than before. Not on my head. My head is very, very short and I can't tell what's happening. But it's coming back all over my body. In, with with a vengeance and <laughs> it's just like what one of the great things about being middle-aged is you you know you don't have to worry about hair so much anymore well now I do and it makes me feel out of control like there are so many things happening to my body that I have no control over and now you mean I'm going to have to start shaving my legs <laughs> all the time, <laughs> every single day with these hands. And, you know, it, I just feel helpless. And then I remember everybody has unwanted hair. And, it, and I feel normal again. You know, some people have that in a way that is very painful in their lives. And... To, and then the other extreme, you know, maybe people don't ever think about unwanted hair, but it's just an example of that we're all in this boat together and we do lose sight of the horizon and we need to be very kind to ourselves. I'm not doing the greatest job at that, maybe the last maybe just the last little day or two. Um, you know, I'm like, I need to be mentally tough. Uh, but we should be so kind to ourselves because God is. He is so kind. And it's challenging to believe that and remember that with um, hard setbacks. But it's helpful for me to talk about it because I know he is so kind. Um, I wrote this in my journal. Um, it was just a 
um, a verse that came in our nightly devotion. Yes, Craig and I are like devotioning all over the place. <laughs> um, you know, I had that big thick book that was the summer um, divine hours. And it's over now. It just went through August and I feel like, oh no. So this verse came from one of those um, divine hours. It was the Compline that night. And before we went to bed, we read this verse. Um, Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep me, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hold me under the shadow of your wings. <sighs> is scripture not amazing? How would we know that this is the kind of God we have? That he's a God who redeems me? He's a God of truth. He's a God that already has me as the apple of his eye. And so I'm asking, keep me. Although that's just the cry of the heart of his children. Like, we keep me. He, of course, he's going to keep us. We are in his beloved son. And then that he has wings that he wants to have as shadow over us. And that where we get to hide. This is who God is. So, um, God has, let's see, given us, shall I share with you um, a few, like, just little encouragements, ways God has kept us going each day. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay. I don't know how to pause and edit and everything, so hang on. <laughs> I gotta get a tissue. Hang on, y'all. You can look at the house. Okay, see? Isn't it cute? What do you think? Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I don't want y'all to have to keep hearing me sniffle. Okay. <laughs> oh, my land. Anyway, um, texts, comments on our Caring Bridge, comments on my YouTube, phone call. Feel free to call me. Um, being in the boat together is what God intended, and he comes to us through each other. So a lot of encouragement has come to us through people reaching out to us. Um, also, um, one text came. I, I had heard a sermon. Um, it was at our, we watch our church online. And um, this one verse has just stuck with me. He started it out. I just never know if I should name names. <sighs> anyway, the preacher that day said, For my arm they hope. So this whole idea of God's arm, and the way I remembered it in my mind was a long arm. Um, I looked back at my journal, and it's for my arm they hope. I didn't put down the scripture, so I don't couldn't look it up. But I think there are other verses about the long arm of God, right? His long arm is reaching into our situation where we have had a major setback. Um, but his arm is long. And so um, I hope in his arm... And I don't know how many of these verses to share that have been encouraging me. Well, but, okay, how about this? Um, this was from Spurgeon. I've mentioned him 
the checkbook of faith. Jehovah himself will deliver his people in the greatness of his mercy. So it's not just that he does it because, okay, I kind of begrudge you, but I will help because you're asking and you've got your friends asking. <laughs> um, in the greatness of his mercy, that is the heart of God toward his children who are crying out to him in need. And why do I ask for horses if Jehovah himself lifts up his arm for my defense? His long arm. So, and on the same day, a friend texted me kind of this battle idea, but it was, you have equipped me with strength for battle. You made those who rise against me sink under me. So, um, and another friend texted, I was helpless, so he saved me. Um, and my mama, I wish I could pull up the whole text she sent me, but she has been so encouraging and full of faith. And, um, but she said, Jamie, you are full of the power of the Holy Spirit. And that has stayed with me because, you know, I can just feel weak. And I go, wait, no. Yes, I'm weak, but God is strong. And God's Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit is in me. He will get me through one day at a time, one hour at a time. So, um, oh yeah, mom sends me audio messages. It's so wonderful hearing her voice. And that's probably where that was, not a written thing. Uh, uh, oh yeah, well, there it is. Yeah. Oh, she said you are God's beautiful child whom he loves beyond measure. After she talked about the Holy Spirit in me. So, um, but some things that are just like, they're just practical, tangible, earthly things that have helped us. I mentioned the U.S. Open. Yes, tennis. Oh, it's been such a lifeline. And then I haven't been going many places because I don't want to be around germs. My immune system isn't compromised yet, but I don't want to get sick. And... So we haven't gone many places and it's just terrible. And so, um, okay. Uh, um, well, anyway, so like I have gone when, when it's not a crowded time, I went to Target twice, once with my sister Jill and she helped me shop for some clothes I needed. And I drive the little cart around and um, that was super fun. And Craig is so long-suffering. He shopped around a little bit on his own, and then he waited on us. <laughs> and, um, and I've gone to the grocery store with Craig a few times. But I tell you, I was just getting a horrible cabin fever. And so we decided we were going to go to a museum. And the closest one... So, because the driving kind of takes it out of me too. So, the closest one was the George Bush Presidential Library. Have you ever been to a presidential library? It was super fun. <laughs> We're desperate. Uh, I Craig wheeled me around in a wheelchair, and I I could walk, but we wanted it, it was kind of big, and we so that I could we could do the whole thing. He wheeled me around and then I would stand up and go look at stuff and whatever. But um, it was hard at first, you know, we go in there and I'm like, I don't care. Uh, but when I can focus on something, I am able to get out of myself and get out of this thing, you know, this hardship. And we just... I ended up being able to immerse myself 
in just the whole presidency of George Bush. And it was very interesting. And it reminded me of those years, you know, that was a long time ago now. And um, we skipped the scary stuff like 9-11, things that are sad, we skipped. And, um, but it just, it, it like brought us, brought me into a different mindset and Craig too. Um, and then that evening, um, our old friend, um, <laughs> Kelly, she came and, um, oh, actually, and she brought her husband that time after we had been to the museum. They came and dropped by just to, so we could meet David and, um, and it's just so helpful, just chatting and being with friends and letting them, you know, tell us about them and stuff. So great, so great. And um, Craig and I, luckily the hundreds weather that returned has gone away again. <laughs> uh oh, Craig's home. <laughs> so, We'll figure out what I'm going to do, but he, we, uh, so Craig and I have been walking in the mornings. He's running sometimes and then he'll walk with me sometimes or I'll just walk. And so I've been trying to kind of gain some strength. I decided, look, if I burn calories, hopefully I'll eat more calories because I've got to get out in nature and I have got, and I feel like I need to strengthen myself. So so far, so good. I haven't lost any weight. And on that note, I have been eating pretty well, y'all. I'm eating a lot of all normal food. And I kind of have to stuff myself every time I eat. I try to eat four times a day. And so it's kind of like a, I have to like drive myself. <laughs> hey, I'm doing my video. <laughs> How'd you figure? I saw you talking to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> he saw me talking to the wall. Could you hear him? Um, just come on in. I think I'll stay here unless it gets too difficult. I'll just be kind of... Okay. Yeah. yeah. Everybody likes hearing you in the background. So, um, yeah. So, I have gained... Um, since I was at home, well, I started gaining weight, like weight, like a pound and then another pound and another in the last two weeks before we left home. And then since we've been here, I've kind of stayed around that same weight. So I've gained about four pounds and it's nice to have a buffer for Lord willing when I go into the hospital. So, um... But you can keep praying about that. I stuff myself so that I can get the ability to eat more food the next time. You see what I mean? And it's kind of uncomfortable and feels a little odd, especially if I'm with people. I'm like distracted and like, oh, I've got to stuff this food down my <laughs> So, um, but that's been going well. And so it's helped me feel okay to go for walks, which is also a life-saving thing. Just one of those earthly things that God gives us. It's not all just trying to pray and think the truth. It's doing things and being with people and living real life that God created. I mean, his creation is full of life and wonder. And when you're sick and you're just trapped and you know, doing medical things, you can forget that there's all this beauty and vitality, and it helps to be involved in some of that, like watching tennis. It's so beautiful. Um, um, and then my, I've had a couple of FaceTimes with friends, uh, family, and, uh, Craig too, and the my did I tell you about my childhood friend that we've known each other since we were two? I think I did. 
Carmen. We, she and her husband came over yesterday and we reminisced about each of us had been to Scotland and we shared pictures. And it again was like, oh yeah, I had a full life and I'm still alive and I'm still connected to to beauty and to this planet, the things that God created that he loves. And it's just interesting how it can help. Um, Maddie, my niece, brought me, brought us dinner again and said, you know, she didn't need to eat. She was just dropping it off, but could she commune with us for a little while? And it's like, yes, please. And she's just beautiful and communing with each other is what we need. So it really lifted us too. So all of those things are keeping us going. Uh, let's see. I feel like I was going to say one more thing about something there. Um, oh, dear, I don't know. Um, yeah. I think. That's where we are. Oh, I know. <laughs> Big deal. Sarah, our daughter is coming in tonight. <laughs> oh man. So she's flying in and we're picking her up at the airport tonight. And, um, and so then tomorrow, when I get admitted to the hospital around one o'clock, we'll have, we'll have a, a team, me and Craig and Sarah. And that will be amazing to have her communing with us, her fellowship, her friendship and, um, her support. And, she will be able to stay until Friday. And so hopefully I will get discharged on Wednesday. Um, and we'll be back home together. And guess what happens on Wednesday? Wednesday, Hannah comes. Our other daughter, in case you don't know. Um, they're twins. And so they have quite a bond. And so we'll all four be together for for a couple of days. and uh, And then Hannah will be here with us for a bit, for a while. We're not sure how long. Um, she will play that by ear, I think. Um, but I love their husbands. My son's in love, as they say. And for the sacrifices they make for them to come. And um, I, just, I just want to see my grandchildren, y'all. I want to get well and be normal and So, thinking of talking about my family reminded me of my grandchildren. But anyway, so so we've got that. I'll start the shots, and they'll be here the next week, continuing shots and praying that the shots mobilize the stem cells in my bone marrow to move into my bloodstream. Just millions of them that God's long arm would move from his merciful heart. The one who saves us when we're helpless. I was helpless, so you saved me. The one who is our redeemer. That is his heart. That is his heart. Even when things look bad, are bad, we can sink back into God, the eternal heart of love. It can be really hard to do that, as you've heard me talk about. I'm not saying that's easy, 
and uh, it's an ebb and flow, a uh, wax and wane, a, um, I wish it could just stay steady. Um, but I think that's not gonna be until heaven. So don't be dismayed when you struggle and find yourself um, having a hard time remembering who God is in your life. Be kind and compassionate to yourself as God is compassionate to you. I love you, family. I love you, friends. You guys are the best. Craig and I love you, and thank you so much for carrying us. We'll talk soon. Bye.